What's up guys, Matt Laidlaw here, coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson, LA area's oldest, largest, and finest Harley-Davidson dealership. So we're at the start of a brand new 2018 model year. I'm really excited about the brand new soft tail chassis. <laughs> the cosmetic changes to some of the touring bikes and new CVOs so a lot of cool changes this year guys uh, a lot of kind of doubt in a lot of the uh, Dyna people's minds right now I know there was kind of a kind of been a big uh, fallout on social media with all the hate and everything that's been going on with Harley Davidson's move to uh, get rid of the Dyna uh, individuality and, and combine both the soft tails and the Dyna families but I think this new frame is going to be awesome. I'm about to jump on it for the very first time. So the review I'm going to be doing today is the 2018 Fat Bob with the 114 cubic inch build in it. You can get this bike from the factory with the 107 or the 114. It's helped me to ride in the 114 and giving you guys my first impressions. All right guys, so let me take you through this thing. So the paint job on this is the industrial gray denim. This paint job is only available on the 114 cubic inch variation of this bike. Again, you can get this in a 107 or a 114. You pay about $1,700 extra for the 114. So this is Harley Davidson's performance driven soft tail. Of all the soft tails that were released this year, this bike was all about uh, making decisions and engineering towards performance. So let me go through some things here. So this headlamp is unique to just this bike. This is the only soft tail with this headlamp on it. Uh, really cool LED headlamp. This bike has inverted forks. This is the only uh, bike in the new soft tail lineup that has inverted forks. You've got these real meaty tires on here, kind of paying homage to the old fat bobs. The tread pattern on these fat bobs are very unique to just this bike. Here's a shot of the air cleaner here. It's a ventilator style air cleaner. You got a Tommy Gun exhaust style with those cutout holes. Kind of a bronze finish on the uh, the header pipes there. This is one of three bikes that have an external uh, preload adjustment knob there. The other two being the Fat Boy and the Breakout. So you can uh, adjust and dial up the preload according to your weight and the load. If you have a passenger on this bike, um, they're going to hate you because it's not the most comfortable seat in the world, but you're going to want to dial up that preload uh, according to the weight that you are you have on top of this bike. Here's the seat, the stitching, and, and the kind of the pattern on the seat is really cool, real high premium. Um, it's not a padded seat. Um, it's not a long haul seat, guys. It's a very firm, performance-oriented seat to kind of keep you planted in one position on this thing. The exhaust is really unique to just this bike as well. It's kind of like this up sweep two into one into two exhaust here um, and I'll be starting it for you in a minute. Uh, it has this these uh, etched graphics on the wheels. That's something that has been on the Fat Bob now for several years. Kind of a cool additional premium finish to the wheel on here. You got this really short chopped bobbed rear fender on here. Uh, you got nice uh, clearance between the, the fender and the, and the rear wheel back there. Again, it's got a taller suspension to maximize the travel and the shocks to give you a, a real nice ride on this thing. This bike has uh, forward controls. I will say the reach has been reduced as compared to the old Fat Bobs. So uh, in my last Fat Bob video, I said you had to be like 5'9 uh, or so to reach the old Fat Bobs controls comfortably. I would say that's probably been brought down by an inch or two this year. Um, all these uh, guys in the background are coming are from China. They're here for the dealer show. We just had the dealer show a few days ago, so they're here to check out the dealership. Here is a, uh, a shot of the, uh, the heads up display here. So you've got your tack, uh, an analog tack, and you've got a digital miles per hour there, and you got digital fuel as well. And then uh, you can cycle with the uh, that little top toggle switch on the top left on the left hand handlebars to toggle between like your digital RPM and how many miles you have remaining and etc. This headlamp reminds me of some of those uh, aftermarket headlamps that are real popular on Dynas right now like Rusty Butcher rides uh, with one of those headlamps on there that's kind of like a bar LED headlamp that are real popular on the Dynas but Harley Davidson made their variation it turned out really nice this LED daymaker is real bright that that headlamp is only on this bike so you won't see it you know rehashed on the different models 
There's a lot of things about this Fat Bob that are different than the other Softail models in the lineup. They, they did make this Fat Bob extra special. I feel like this is uh, Harley Davidson's way of uh, flipping the bird to everybody and saying, if you're not going to buy the Fat Bob that we've made in the past, we're going to definitely make it a badass bike and make you buy it this year. And so, yeah, this Fat Bob is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's, uh, the, the graphics on the tank are pretty cool. They're, uh, they're non-symmetrical graphics, meaning you got the Harley Davidson written on the top of the tank on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you got kind of that clean bar and shield. So you got your gas cap on the right-hand side. And this is a three and a half gallon tank that kind of got a lot of criticism initially as people said, well, why, why do some of these soft tails have a smaller tank? Well, again, this tank kind of goes along with the whole theme of this bike and that is a higher performance bike. Here's a shot of the fob and the key guys. The key only does one thing on this motorcycle. It locks the fork. Um, this is a really cool aluminum key that came out with this year. It's really light. Um, not that, you know, weight of a key matters too much, but it, it's just a nice aluminum key with like, a etched etched uh, wording of Harley Davidson in the side of it. Basically how this works, they're all keyless now guys. So you just hit the run switch on this bike and as long as that fob is within range, the ignition fires up and then you hit the start button to, to start it up. So I'm toggling with that switch on the left handlebar to kind of toggle through the electronic display here with the clock. You got your RPM there um, digitally if, if the tack's not good enough for you. You got a trip A and a trip B. And then you also have a uh, remainder, how many miles you have approximately before you ran out of gas. So turn signals are all the same still. They're self-canceling. And uh, you can get ABS on this bike. It's an option on the 107. It's $795 to get the ABS on the 107 version. If you get the 114 version of this bike, it comes standard. So I mean, that's just another... 795 bucks right there. So really with the ABS, it's only a different difference of about a thousand bucks to get the the 114. Here's kind of a a chart here to for you to uh, measure exactly where your bar stance is. It gives you kind of a, a degree indicator uh, of you know how how much your bars are rotated. If you want to kind of change the the handlebar positioning, it's got kind of a a drag bar style with a slight pullback, which is pretty typical on a fat bob here. So here's the, the new suspension once again. This this is a Showa dual bending valve. So it's the suspension, it's similar and comparable to what came out on the touring bikes last year. And um, I'll be linking my video to uh, kind of my overview of this new chassis. I, I explained the suspension a little bit more in that video. So here's your keyhole for the, the fork lock here. I gotta say the fork, the fork lock is really smooth and you don't have to pull like, you don't have to put, take pressure off the handlebars in the past. You just put the key in and, and spin it. You don't have to worry about kind of uh, uh, jiggling the handlebars to, to make the pin line up and everything. So real smooth there. Um, I'll also mention too, this is the only bike in the new Softail lineup that has dual disc brakes in the front. And uh, those brakes, they bite real good. Uh, and I'll get into that more in my riding portion of the video. But you got kind of the wrinkle black finish on most of the engine covers, the finish on the engine covers. The kickstands are new this year. They're okay. Um, I will say I wish the kickstands locked into place better. The tab is very, very small um, that holds the kickstand in the uh, uh, extracted position so if you're moving the bike around on the ground um, if the bike if the weight of the bike comes up at all off that kickstand and, and you shift the the bike forward or backwards or I should I should say forwards then yeah that kickstand will flip out that that's that is one thing about these 2018 soft tails that I wish they would have you know done a little bit differently is made that kickstand um, go into a deeper channel uh, much like the touring bikes for safety's sake, so the kickstand doesn't flip out. But, you know, the weight as far as picking the bike up off the kickstand, I mean, that's dialed in really nicely. And you can definitely, a lot of people are criticizing the fact that Harley Davidson's making a big deal about their weight reduction. Guys, I'm telling you right now, you can feel the weight reduction. I mean, this, this bike's been reduced um, like right around 33 pounds or so from previous Fat Bobs. So that in combination with you know the stiffness of the frame, you know, really improves 
you know, the, the, the handling and, and how agile this bike performs out on the, out on the road. So this bike, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but all the soft tails have the Milwaukee eight engine. So you no longer have the twin cam one Oh three. These all have the Milwaukee eight one Oh seven, uh, or the uh, one fourteen. This is kind of cool guys. So you have a USB port right here on the bike. So if you want to charge a cell phone or whatever, you've got a little charging area there kind of slick. I thought that was cool of them to include that. But anyways, um, yeah, that's, that's about it for the, uh, the walkthrough on the bike there guys. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start this thing up for you guys. So you can listen to it and, and see it visually. <laughs> So one of the main differences between the Milwaukee 8 that was on the touring bikes and the Milwaukee 8 that is now on the Softail platform is there is a dual counterbalancer that is gear driven and those counterbalancers uh, alleviate uh, primary drive vibration by 100%. So this is a hard mounted engine to the frame. Again, that complements the stiffness, overall stiffness and handling of this, this motorcycle. You know, whereas on the Touring, the FL bikes, those are all rubber mounted. So yeah, if you want to see some more details on that, check out my video I did on the, the chassis that I'll be linking at the end of this video and in a card. Here are the available colors. The first one there was Vivid Black. This is Denim Black. Both, both colors look pretty nice. This next one is Iron or Red Iron Denim. This is a brand new color last year. I'm a pretty big fan of this color, it looks really nice. And then this is Bonneville Salt Denim. Uh, I'm thinking uh, this will be the color I get next, probably in a street glide. And the last color here, which is the color I'm using in this video, is called Industrial Gray Denim. And you can only get that color on the 114 version. So let me jump into some stats here. I'm going to compare this bike with a couple other bikes, the Street Bob and the Fat Boy. So as you can see here, the Fat Bob comes in a 107 and a 114, as well as the Fat Boy. And here's your price tag for each, it's about 1700 bucks more for the 114. The Street Bob, 14 499 it does not come with the, four, the 114 option. Fat Boy, 18 999 and for the 114 version, 20299 and there's some, you know, depending on the color, you know, that, that fluctuates a little bit, the price tag. And uh, the Fat Boy also comes in the anniversary model as well in two different colors. So all these bikes have the Milwaukee 8, which is the new engine that was just released last year, only on the touring bikes. There are a few slight variations uh, to the Milwaukee 8, depending on its application, whether it be in the touring bikes or these soft tails. And again, watch my video on the soft tail launch for you know all the details on that i have a really detailed video on these soft tail chassis so here's your exhaust so this is a two into one into two dual side the cat is in the muffler on all these bikes guys two into two on the street bob and a two into two staggered on the fat boy So um, something I should know is the, the travel and the rear shocks, but um, the travel is uh, the greatest on the Fat Bob. 
and you can just see there the seat height is you know two inches taller on the fat bob as opposed to these other bikes here so you do have you know i'm guessing uh a more yeah, more available suspension travel on the fat bob as opposed to the other ones so here's a big deal guys the rake the rake uh, is 28 degrees on the fat bob and 30 on both the street bob and the fat boy um, and that was something that i noticed right away when i started riding it that that um, complements or enhances the handling characteristics so here's the tires this is a 150 front a 180 rear on the street bob you're at a 100 front and a 150 rear and the fat boy huge tires 160 front and a 240 in the rear 18 inch wheels on the fat boy he's got these big meaty muscly looking uh, wheels on the fat boy boy so the fat bob 3.6 gallon tank street bob 3.5 i'm not sure you get that 0.1 gallon but the fat boy is the full five gallon tank here you can see the weight um that's as shipped so running order weight you're looking at 676 pounds on the fat bob that's a 33 pound reduction from 2017 model year the street bob 653 pounds and the fat boy you're looking just under 700 pounds for that thing now the engine torque i found it kind of interesting um it produces max torque at 3500 rpm um, and you're looking at 107 foot pounds of torque on the 107 114 118 foot pounds of torque street bob 110 foot pounds of torque and then the fat boy 109 and 119 so i'm i'm guessing the cam is different in the fat bob this is the first time i've kind of heard of this as i've been making this video so i wish i had more information on that but the cam's got to be different if they if they produce their max torque at different RPMs. So the Fat Bob likes to be revved out. I'm, I'm guessing it probably has a higher top end with the Fat Bob. Again, one more thing to you know complement the overall uh, fact that the Fat Bob is your perf performance oriented soft tail this year. They all get about 47 miles to the gallon, guys. Uh, yeah, the Milwaukee Eight is a very efficient engine the uh the fuel economy is pretty dang good on these things so like i said before the fat bob is the only soft tail that has the dual disc brakes in the front they've got a four piston caliper uh, in the back and a two piston caliper or excuse me a four piston caliper in the front and a two piston caliper in the rear rode for the very first time the new 2018 soft tail chassis I rode the fat bob and this thing feels nothing like the old soft tails guys I know right now a lot of people are kind of uh, distraught and kind of upset about the fact that there's no more Dyna well you know I wouldn't even really call this thing a soft tail you know Harley Davidson used that name soft tail just because they've got a lot of history and just uh, you know a lot of you know, the, the intellectual property of the name and the branding and everything you know they've got a long history but this thing rides and handles and performs nothing like a soft tail and you know what if you took two riders of equal skill and put one of them on a tricked out Dyna I mean you can even use aftermarket parts on a Dyna and then put somebody on this thing the rider on this bike would blow away the rider on the Dyna hands down no questions asked uh, it's just so much better and you know I, I think a lot of the naysayers are going to expect you know a lot of us that are trying these bikes for the first time to say that um, you know especially a guy like me that you know sells Harley Davidson's but you know bottom line I'm going to tell you the good and the bad I, I really don't care um, I'll, I'll say the bad I've said plenty of bad things about you know different aspects of Harley Davidson's in the past um, but you know truly this thing handles so well so there, there's three different rake angles on on the soft tail on this new chassis so 
This one has the steepest, I believe this is 28 uh, degree rake on it. And so that's one of the first things I noticed right away is just a really steep rake on these bikes. And, and what that does for you is it gives you real snappy, agile handling. I have to admit the first couple turns I made on this thing, I was a little bit timid because this thing just does not handle like any Harley Davidson that I've ever ridden. And you know, I've, I've been riding Harleys for you know 15 years. So yeah, the, the handling is, is phenomenal. The, the shock, the suspension on this thing, you know, typically if I really start cranking on, on some of these soft tails, especially like the Fatboy Low and like the Fatboy S and like the Slims, you know, the, the soft tails that have the shorter suspension, I'll bottom these things out and, and just the, it's too soft and you know, you, you really can't crank on them hard through the turns and if you hit bad ruts and things in the freeway at high speeds, you know, you'll, you'll feel it, the, the ride is just, you know, it, it's not great. You gotta have really nice conditions on the old soft tails to, you know, really, really get an enjoyable ride. This thing is nothing like that. The, the, this big, fat, robust mono shock that they have in there just is, is a firm performance shock is really how I, I would classify it. And, you know, there's a, there's a knob on the side of the bike where you can dial it up to, to your weight. Really, you know, it, it doesn't really, really need much preload unless you're riding two up on this bike. But, yeah, I was extremely impressed with how, how you know, just the, the firm performance really is the best way I can describe the suspension on this thing. You know, I got it up to about 80 on the freeway and, you know, I was hitting some bad potholes and things. And, yeah, it just it soaked it up really, really well. Um, I, I would say though that this is still a small chassis bike. Uh, if you're going to get up on the freeway and do distance riding, the touring bike is still going to be the best bet. You know, today I had someone who came in and said, "Hey, man, I want to trade in my Road King. I want to get one of the new soft tails, like the Heritage or something." And I said, "Hey, you know, it's, it's a cool bike and it, it's brand new and it's it's really nice. And, and what it does, it does really well. But you know, let's not get crazy." The, the touring bikes are still better touring bikes. And what I mean specifically by touring bike is, you know, you still got this real nice, comfortable ride. They're, they're real great in, in a straight line going down the freeway. Do they handle well for what they are? A big heavy bagger? Yes, they handle very well for a big bagger. Now, they don't handle anywhere near what this quick little snappy, agile, soft tail Fat Bob is gonna do. And I'll say too, you know, some of these bikes like the Fat Boy and the Breakout that have the bigger, wider rear tire and a more dramatic, a uh, larger rake angle, they're not gonna handle as good as this bike does. If you're looking for a performance oriented uh, soft tail slash Dyna, this is, I'm predicting here because I haven't ridden them all, but I'm, I'm predicting that this is going to be the best one. This also has, you know, the 114 on it, and you know, this bike hasn't even broken in, so I didn't, you know, open it up or anywhere, you know, close to opening it up. But this thing absolutely rips. I mean, I could definitely tell that it's a little bit detuned, you know, with this electronic uh, throttle cable, the throttle by wire. You know, Harley Davidson to get through emissions and everything like that. You know, they, they really regulate how much throttle you can give it and, and they regulate, you know, in the, in the different RPM ranges. So you can tell that, you know, it's detuned, but, you know, with, with a tune and like an air cleaner, I mean, this thing and, and, you know, maybe different exhausts, you can really wake this thing up a lot. But, you know, just stock, the 114 was incredibly powerful. Uh, you know, Harley Davidson, one of the main points they're really talking about a lot at the dealer show is, is the stiffness in the frame and the chassis, and that was extremely apparent. Uh, this thing just, just the, the handling and, you know, cranking on it through the turns and things, it was very responsive. Um, yeah, I just can't say enough good things about that. This, the Fat Bob, is the only uh, bike in the new Softail family that has the inverted forks. Those inverted forks, you know, they have very nice compression and rebound. Uh, you know, I was, I was making it a point to go over some of the reflectors in the road and stuff and just uh, really paying attention to how well the suspension controlled 
know, the rebound of the wheel and really keeping that contact with the pavement and the wheel. And it, it did it very, very well. Um, very rarely can I say this about Harleys, um, but you know, I wasn't anywhere near riding this bike to its its max capability. You know, I, I was quite frankly say that I'm not a good enough rider to ride this to its max capability. Um, I'm a decent rider. Um, you know, I, I can put you know the the dynas and the soft tails. You know, I, I can pretty much take those to their max capacity, especially through the turns, because on on the old soft tails guys. You scrape the boards without even trying. Like I would be going through a turn on the old soft tail frame, and I'm, for those of you who watch my videos have seen me do this, uh, I'll be going through a turn and I don't, I'm not even trying to scrape the boards and I'll scrape a peg or a board or something like that. And you know, I was going up a, a big sweeping turn onto the freeway and I, I was kind of intentionally hanging my, my heel down on my shoe a little bit. So, so as not to scrape the peg first, but to scrape my, my shoe first. And to, for, in order to scrape, I had to, you know, throttle up even harder than I was, you know, initially comfortable doing. Just because it's a new bike, and I don't, I don't want to get all crazy on a brand new motorcycle. But the lean angle on these is, is phenomenal. And you know, there's a few different suspension heights. Uh, again, the Fat Bob is kind of if you're looking for a bike to ride really aggressively. This is the bike. This is the best performing soft tail in this new lineup. Again, I haven't ridden them all, but just kind of from the spec sheets and in the direction that I know Harley Davidson was going with this Fat Bob, um, I know that this is the bike that they set up, you know, the most, the most performance oriented as far as your lean angle, the seat height with the, the travel and, the, and that mono shock, and um, you know the 114. Obviously, you know you can get the 114 in a few of the other models. The, uh, the Heritage, the Fat Boy, and the Breakout as well. But the Fat Boy and the Breakout, I'm just predicting here because I haven't ridden them yet. I mean, you got that big fat 240 millimeter rear tire, so those aren't going to be able to handle nearly as good as this bike, you know, just because you're going to have to, you know, put a lot of muscle into to, into leaning them over. Now the Heritage, you know, I've, I think that thing is going to you know handle really really well. But um, you know, you don't have that really uh, that really short uh, rake on the front of the bike like you do on this one. So uh, I'm predicting it's not going to be quite as agile. But yeah, another thing is, is the weight. I mean, someone asked me, you know, where did they reduce the weight? Oh, it was in the, the fuel tank because this is only a three and a half gallon fuel tank. No, uh, they, they really made it a point to reduce weight on every single part that they, they could. They reevaluated evaluated every single part on this bike to, to see if they could cut weight. Hell, they even cut weight on the, on the damn key. You know, it's an aluminum key now. So, you know, they really, you know, I, I think they, you know, they listen to the naysayers, you know, they listen to the criticism that people have about Harley Davidson's and, and obviously the weight is a big criticism. So they, they reevaluated every single part on this bike to really cut weight. So, you know, most of the Dynas in the past were, you know, slightly below 700 pounds or you know, right around that 700 pound mark. Well, this bike is around 650 pounds and it's definitely apparent. Uh, they made it a big deal to, to really give people an idea of how heavy 30 pounds is like we don't know how much 30 pounds weighs but it, it really does make a difference so anyways guys I just wanted to kind of uh, put this on film right after I rode the bike just so uh, it would be fresh in my mind but yeah guys um, just to recap again this bike feels nothing like the old soft tails nothing I mean just the fact that they use the word soft tail uh, it, it's just a word, you guys. I mean, this frame it is is awesome. Um, it's it's really good. I'm really impressed with it. So, um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some negative things right now. Uh, I think for a distance bike, this you know is it's not a good distance bike. You know, we got three and a half gallons on here, and I really think with that the rake and trail, you know, being so short. It's not going to be like a good get out on the highway and ride type of a bike. I think Harley Davidson was really looking to just uh, get into the performance niche of of their cruiser line, and, and they did that with this bike. So I think that's probably where the downfalls of this bike are going to be. You know, passenger comfort is going to be terrible. Uh, I haven't ridden a passenger on this bike, but you know, it's got passenger pegs. It's got the little pillion back there, but. 
I mean, let's face it, this is like a 20 minute seat back there. It's gonna be terrible for a passenger. But, you know, overall for a solo rider, just looking to really, you know, uh, ride a bike really aggressively, this is a bike to ride really aggressively. And I know there's, especially on the West Coast here, there's a lot of Dyna guys that really like to ride these bikes aggressively. If you're one of those guys, uh, dry your eyes because this is the bike to do that on. <laughs>